let's think a little bit about the metric, the metric system units for volume, or essentially how much space something is taking up in three dimensions. So the base unit in the metric system for volume is the liter, is the liter. And there's a couple of ways that you can visualize a liter. One way you could think about a liter is if you took a cube, if you took a cube that is 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters deep, 10 centimeters wide, and 10 centimeters tall, then this amount of space that you're taking up, this volume, this volume is one liter. So this right over here is one liter. Another way to connect it to our everyday lives is you've probably gone and bought, or your parents have bought, a two liter bottle of something. Oftentimes it's soda. So this right, those two liter bottles are, as I just mentioned, these are two liters. So let me do my best attempt to draw what those bottles look like. They look something like, they look something like this, at least in the US. You oftentimes soda and other things will be sold in these in these two liter in these two liter bottles. So if you take half of this, you are looking at a liter more so this so a liter would be about half of this. So if, the, if it's half full, a liter would be about that much. And hopefully that is consistent or that makes sense relative to this 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. 10 centimeter cube. Now, if you want to measure things that are a lot smaller than a liter, the typical unit used, and obviously in the metric system, you can always use the prefixes deci, centi, but the one that's most typically used is the milliliter. Milli, the milliliter. And we've already seen the prefix milli, it means one thousandth. So this means one thousandth, one thousandth of a one thousandth of a liter. Or another way of thinking about it is one liter is equal to one thousand, one thousand milliliters. Milli, milliliters. And if you wanted to visualize what a milliliter looks like, imagine taking a cube, instead of making it 10 centimeters on each dimension, make it only one centimeter in each dimension. So one centimeter wide, one centimeter one centimeter deep, one centimeter wide, and one centimeter high, and then you're looking at a milliliter. And if you want to think about the type of things that are measured in milliliters, you might think things about dosage of medicine. So for example, a typical uh, a teaspoon that you might see in your cabinet is going to be a little bit over four milliliters, almost five milliliters. So that might be good for medicine dosage or maybe small ingredients in, 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 in some type of a recipe. If you want to go larger than a liter, and once again, you could use all the metric prefixes. You could use decaliter, you could use hectoliter, but the one that's most typically used is kiloliter. Kiloliter, kiloliter. And as the prefix kilo implies, this is equivalent to 1,000 one thousand liters. And if you want to visualize this, you can this actually isn't as large as you might assume it to be. If, if you just take a cube and this size and instead of taking each dimension being 10 centimeters, if you were to take a cube where each dim dimension is exactly one meter, each dimension is exactly one meter. So one meter deep, one meter wide and one meter tall, this volume, is equivalent to one kiloliter, one kiloliter. So you can imagine something like a kiloliter would be very useful for measuring, say, the volume of water inside of a, of a swimming pool.